All right, in this video, we're going to continue to add bonus features to our Adventures of Mario program. Uh, this video is going to focus on making Mario appear to be a little bit more realistic. So right now we have a still image of Mario that just glides back and forth and jumps. We're going to turn that into an animated video of Mario, where as he's uh, as you're moving to the right, it looks like he's walking to the right. As you're moving to the left, it looks like he's walking to the left. Uh, and if he's jumping, he actually looks like he's jumping. Now, we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need to make variables for this. We're going to need a handful of images. And we're actually going to have to turn our player into his own individual function to allow us to create some type of animation or like uh, steps. Each time he moves, he's almost stepping. For the images, what you need is you need a sprite sheet uh, of your player. So for example, here is a sprite sheet of the classic Mario. And as you can see, we have Mario jumping, we have Mario standing, we have Mario walking, Mario walking, Mario stepping, small Mario, big Mario. This is called a sprite sheet. Now once you find one of these for your characters, or if you draw one, you have to select which ones you want. So for example, I don't need all of these. Uh, I'm not going to be changing the color of Mario. Um, I only need him to be walking, and instead of doing three steps, so here's walking one, walking two, walking three, I'm just going to do two, and I'm going to do my Mario jumping. So I've broken it down to where I have jumping Mario, <clears throat> walking left, walking left two, walking right, walking right two. So I have these images already ready to go. They're already PNGs, so they're transparent with no white background. Let's go ahead and start by just uploading those images to my files app here, my files menu. So I'm going to hit select, uh, I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to grab those, I guess what, four or five images that we need to make Mario a bit more animated. <clears throat> now, let's go ahead and just associate those images with uh, a variable in our preload function. So I'm going to scroll down to my multimedia variables here, and I'm going to make some more Mario variables. So I'm going to call it Mario left one, Bar Mario left two, Mario right one, just a semicolon, and var Mario right two, and of course var Mario jump. All right, so we have now all these variable names. We're going to associate these variable names with our uh, our new image that we uploaded. That's going to happen down in preload. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of my code. Shoot way down here, and I'm just going to put it all underneath Mario. So we're going to say Mario left one equals load image, and that's going to be Mario underscore left one dot p and g. Fortunately, all of these images have similar naming schemes. So if I just grab this and paste it a couple more times. We can kind of do this a little quickly. So Mario left two is going to be Mario underscore left two. Mario right one is going to be Mario right one dot PNG. Mario right two is going to be Mario underscore right two dot PNG. And Mario jump is going to be Mario underscore jump dot PNG. All right. So there we go, we have all of our variables associated to all of our new images. I'm just gonna close our files app here. Let's press play real quick. Nothing's gonna appear differently, but at least we don't have any error messages. So that's a good start. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna pull Mario out of our, our game functions and we're gonna make him his own unique function. And the reason for that is because we're gonna be creating a manual animation. So it's gonna have a lot of code just for the single player. It's easier to keep that code separate and then we'll be able to drop it into each level. Uh, now, there is a animation function in the p5.play library that makes this a little bit quicker to do, but you have to create your players as sprites, and that becomes a little bit more complicated when you have multiple objects, multiple coins, and multiple, uh, like our gravity functions. So we're going to do this the manual way, which is good to learn, so that way you know the long way to do this, and then there's always shortcuts to do it a little bit quicker as you, uh, you begin to use more libraries. All right, so first thing we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do this right, I guess, below function gravity. doesn't really matter. But we're going to create a new function. I'm just going to borrow my comment and my function starter here from key press. I'm going to call this player1. So this is going to be called function player1. Let's just close that before we forget. 
And just to make sure this is still working correctly, before we bother with all of our new images, I'm just going to drop in the current image code that we have. So image uh, Mario P1X, P1Y, P width, and P height. So this is original still image of Mario for P1. So in theory, if we, instead of placing this image code, if we just place our function player one instead where we want this image to be, Mario should still work exactly like he does now. So let's go into both of our games here, or both of our levels. So here we go, here's draw player. Instead of drawing this image, I'm just gonna comment this out, we're gonna place the player function. Draw player function. So let's borrow this, let's go find that. This is level two, let's go find that in level one as well. So here's my level one code. Let's see, let's see, we draw a player, draw a player, here we go. So we're gonna comment this guy out and we're gonna draw our player function instead. Let's press play and Mario should still act exactly the same, including the power up. So Mario should still grow, which is excellent. And then if we go to level two, let's just make sure that he's working there as well. I of course can't jump through my platforms. There we go. All right, so that's all working lovely, okay. Now what we have to do is we actually have to create that as Mario is looking right, or walking right, he's looking right. As he's looking left, he's uh, walking left. So that's one step. <clears throat> the other thing we have to do is you have to actually create steps. So each time you kind of step forward, you switch between those two walking images. And we're just gonna make it work correctly for the right direction, and then we'll copy and paste right and just change all the rights to left. So we're gonna do one at a time, but let's make some variables first here. We're gonna go all the way up to global. Oops, let's go to our player code. We'll put this with all the player variables because this kind of refers to our player. So here's all of our player stuff. We'll call this walking code. So we're gonna need a variable called step. And we're just gonna start this at step zero. Uh, we're gonna need a variable called looking right. We'll set that to be true. So you're gonna start by looking right variable looking left, we'll set that equal to be false, okay? So that's gonna be looking right, looking left, okay? Now, let's go ahead and activate these looking right and looking left depending on which key you're pressing on your code. Well, you don't need a, a jump because we already actually have a variable called jump that equals true when you're jumping. So we've actually already started this for jump without even knowing in here in our gravity video. So let's go all the way down to key pressed where we're moving left and right here. Key press, key press, key press, there we go. Uh, if left arrow is pressed, well that means that looking left equals true. Let's drop in an else. Looking left equals false. Okay, let's do the same for right. Looking right equals true, and then let's drop in an else looking right equals false. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go to our player function and we're gonna set up just the looking right part and the moving right part first. So let's start in our, our player function here for again, just looking right. So if we say if looking right equals equals true, this means we are walking to the right. All right, the first thing that we wanna say is, well, then looking left must be false. This is technically a redundancy, but it'll stop any image overloading. We also don't want this anymore, by the way. This is our original image, our still image. We're gonna ditch that. So let's just comment that out for now. Uh, and then here's where the steps come in. So because we want this to be animated, if you're on say step one, well that's gonna be Mario walking right one. If you're on step two, then you're on Mario walking right two. So that means that each time we're walking right, we need to add one to our step. We have to take a step. So if we say step equals step plus one, all right, so this is walk right, or I guess I would just say walking. If step is equal to, let's say zero, we'll start at zero. Well then we're gonna do the image 
Mario underscore right. I'm sorry, that's not what it is. What is it? Mario right one. And of course, it's going to be at P1X, P1Y, P width, P heights. And then we're going to say close step. Close step. All right. Then I'm just going to copy this guy. If we're at step one, well, then we want Mario right two. So we're displaying a different image. So step zero displays the first right image. Step one displays the second right image. And after we've taken this last step, then we want step to be equal to zero. We want to go back to the start. So restart steps. Then, of course, we have to close. We're freaking out right now because you have to close walking right. All right, let's see if that works. Let's see if we have an animated walking Mario. So we kind of do. One issue is that we don't have a still image of Mario, and it looks like he's walking so fast we can barely see it. So let's fix two of those things at a time. Let's fix the walking so fast that, he can, that we can't even see it part, okay? So maybe two steps isn't enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stay at right one for a couple steps. Let's say for three steps, we're going to stay at right one. So I'm just going to delete this restart step here for a hot second. So we're going to say um, Mario right one equals, I'm sorry, if step equals one, that's Mario right one. And actually, because we're going to tack on multiple uh, if statements, why don't we do else if? So that's going to say if this is true, else if this is true, else if this is true, because we're going to have a lot of steps here. So else if step equals one, we're still at Mario right one. Else if step equals two, let's still be at right one. So that's three steps for Mario right one. Now let's say else if step equals three, let's go Mario right two. Okay, like so. Uh, let's do six steps. So I'll be three steps per image. Okay, so that's step three is right two, step four is right two. Step five is right to, actually let's do one more because we have zero. So right, so that's one, two, three, three steps, and one, two, three steps. Let's see what that looks like. Let's not forget to set this back to be step equals zero at the end. Restart. Let's give that a try. All right, so we still don't have stationary Mario, right? So he's invisible if we're not moving. But when he's moving, we have a nice animated Mario walking right. Let's fix the stationary Mario here. That's a pretty simple if uh, looking right equals equals false and 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 looking left equals equals false. Not walking. Uh, so then we need to just place an image of still Mario. So let's just say, for example, if I just, I'm just going to borrow this guy right here, or Mario one right. We'll just say close, not, not walking. Let's give that a try. So we said, if we're not looking right, if we're not looking left, that means that we're not walking. So here's our still image uh, of Mario not walking. Good. Now, this still image isn't actually Mario still, right? And if we press left, nothing happens. He goes away because we haven't done left yet. Uh, I'm going to real quick, let's go ahead and save. That's a good idea. And I'm actually going to upload one more file. I'm going to upload a still image. So I have Mario still. Let's just take a second in our preload to say that Mario still is equal to load image Mario underscore still dot png and we gotta scroll all the way up global make a variable for that guy so mario still and let's go to our player real quick player 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 where is that lots of scrolling here gravity player all right, so instead of saying Mario right one, this is going to be Mario still. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Still Mario, walking Mario. Great. Let's do left. Pretty easy. I'm going to copy and paste this whole chunk of code for looking right equals equals true. 
be very careful not to paste it inside of another statement. So I paste that in between my if right and my nothing, my not walking. And my looking right now becomes looking left equals equals true, walking to the left. Looking left equals equals false now becomes looking right equals false. The step stays the same. We're still stepping. Uh, the difference is now it's going to be Mario right one is now Mario left one. Let's just borrow this code. Paste, paste, and Mario right two is now going to be Mario left two. But the positions and the steps, all that stays the same. So we just changed our looking left to our looking right. Let's see if that works. So we have Mario walking left and Mario walking right. Let's make sure this is working on both levels real quick here. Works for our power up. And yep, we're working in both levels. One thing I actually just noticed is it looks like my Mario, my speed is actually the power up speed doesn't get reset for level two because Mario is still moving faster as if he's on the power up, but that's working. Now, the next step is for jumping, which is pretty similar. I uh, just have to place an image when we're looking to jump. So to add the jump image, all we have to do is edit this if statement right here. So this is saying if we're not walking uh, left or right, then we should be still. Really, it's if we're not walking left or right and and we're not jumping. So that's and and jump equals equals false. So this is not walking and not jumping. Then we are still image. Okay. Not walking and not jumping, right? Else if we are not walking, so that's not looking right equals equals false and and looking left equals equals false but we are jumping so and and jump equals equals true jumping not walking then we want our image to be mario jump p1x p1y p width p height. This is the jump image. Close jumping. All right, so we have our if not walking, not jumping, we're still if we're not walking, but we are jumping, we have a jump image. And then up here, we have our if looking left, then we're walking left. If looking right, then we're walking right. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Let's press play. Just press A. There we go, we have our Mario jumping. So we're looking left, looking right, and jumping. Now I only have a jumping, uh, one jumping, so I don't have like a jumping left and a jumping right. Um, in theory, you could do uh, another jumping image for if you were jumping left and jumping right, et cetera, et cetera. But there you go. So this is learning how to import images that uh, to actually give your sprite an animation. So whether you're making the animation switch between images by stepping, or whether you're just making a particular image happen if conditions are either true or false, like the still image or the jump image, it makes your character significantly more realistic or like the more classic style game.